Hey everybody, welcome to another Primetime Funk Mods review. What we're going to take a look at today, then, in this cute little box, is the Sakura Retro Modding GBA Battery Mod. So, as you can see, it's got some things in common with some of the other ones that we've seen in the industry. So we've got a, a board with a JST connector going to a uh, lithium polymer battery. This one is a 1200 mAh. Um, now I talked with the uh, the creator and he said that he's, he's tested these, the 1200 versus the 1700s that are more in, in use in some of the other uh, battery packs and said that he didn't really find the results all that different. One of the things I do like about this one, just on the face of it, is that this is actually a fair bit lower profile than the other ones in the industry. So, um, when talking with the owner and operator of Sakura Retro Modding, uh, he talked about the fact that he didn't really want to do the same thing as everybody else had done. So, one thing that you'll find different is rather than a USB port jutting out from the edge and therefore you needing to actually buy a different battery door for it or modify the battery door yourself. This one is recessed in so it's actually more of a, a complete drop-in solution. So there's still be some basic trimming to the battery compartment but you do not have to actually modify the battery door itself. So I'm gonna kind of go in uh, show you how it works in my um, beautiful ultimate GBA here and uh, we'll take a look and see how how it fits together so the um, the red flashing light is an indicator that these rechargeable batteries in here actually need to get a bit more juice in them and uh, when I was actually going through the, the test of this one when it was getting down to low battery life it started flickering red more and more often until finally it went flat red and then eventually just died. So that was a pretty awesome built-in feature that I didn't expect. Um, with the uh, the handheld legend slash retro six version, um, they didn't actually have that feature built into the first GBA battery pack. And then they did uh, release an add-on that you could solder on yourself. And then they released the second version of it that actually has that feature built in. But he got this on the first try, which is pretty impressive. So especially in a fairly simplified board. I really like the design on this. It just looks clean. So I am going to turn this off, take out my batteries that need recharging, and show you how she works. So we will not forget to charge up those ladders later. So now for anybody using this, um, you probably already know that modifying these battery bays is pretty simple. So there's a, uh, a piece right here that usually divides the batteries from each other. You can just take a set of flush cutters like these ones and snip that one piece off. It's really just like one hit. Um, and then there's a, a ledge right here. And then there is a jutting out piece on here that you trim down gently and pop off. So now you have pretty much an open compartment. Now the cool part is you don't have to remove any of these parts. There's no soldering required. There's no other additional modification. All you really have to do as you take this guy, make sure that it's been charged up. I have charged it fully since I did my, my discharge test. Um, now, the key with these, and even with the other brands, is you actually put it in with these contacts um, touching the battery posts on this side first, and then push it down on the other side. And that pretty much centers it and makes sure that you've got good contact on the, the other pieces here. And again, all we gotta do is put the regular battery door back on, and she's good to go. And so now we have a fully charged 1200 mAh lithium polymer battery that we can play on for a good period of time. Now that good period of time at full brightness with an easy flash cart that takes a lot more power than a regular game cart and at full volume was a little over two and a half hours. So I uh, got an impressive amount out of that. And if you're actually using a regular cart, um, that would increase exponentially. If you're not running at full volume, that would increase a fair bit as well. And if you're not running at full brightness, it would also increase a lot. So I was pretty impressed with the overall life on this one. I um, did some just like letting it sit there, but I also wanted to make sure that I uh, peppered in a fair amount of gameplay just to make sure that um, I was putting it through the paces. Because when you're pressing the buttons, it does use actually more power than when it's just sitting there and blaring on the uh, the demo screen for the game. So 
Um, otherwise, it's it's a battery. It, it powers the thing, and the, the Game Boy Advance does what it always does. But all in all, a really impressive little product um, from someone who actually designed and built it himself. He actually assembles each one of these by hand and lovingly puts it in the little um, handcrafted box and sends it out to you. So I am a big fan. I've given this particular gentleman uh, a fair chunk of my money since I began the, uh, the retro gaming hobby, and I have never regretted it. I, I bought a lot of stickers and buttons and uh, just some, yeah, uh, geek stuff, admittedly, but this is what we're all we're all into right now, right? So <laughs> if you're watching this video, you're into the same geek stuff. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if there's a whole lot more to say. The, the testing went well, uh, the product works well. Um, I think that a lot of people are actually going to like the fact that there is something else out there that they can get their hands on when those other guys are sold out of their, their slightly more mass produced ones. Um, this one is assembled by hand lovingly and uh, I think he's only getting about like five to 10 of these at a time because he has to assemble them himself, test them and make sure they all work. And then, um, fill the orders on his Etsy. So if you go to, uh, again, Sakura Retro Modding on Etsy, you'll be able to see the listing that he's got for it there. I think he's got a few left. And he's got a lot of other really cool products um, centered around the, the Retroflag G Pi, the RG350. So he's supporting new buttons and um, new design schemes for some of the most popular Chinese handhelds. And uh, yeah, he's just got a, a really nice little little store going on there that I've been a big fan of long before he ever sent me something like this. So I'm not paid for this review. I, I think I get to keep this thing. Well, I'll have to ask him to be sure, but um, I'm definitely going to be using it in my, uh, my future gameplay. Um, I think it's a pretty neat little dude. And uh, I think that's pretty much it for me. So go to his Etsy store, check it out, see if it's something that you like, but um, it's a quality build, and uh, I think he, he fits a, a niche in the market that uh, was not quite tapped yet, so there it is, the um, Sakura Retro Modding GBA Battery Mod.